Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for college instructors or even high school teachers. And today is a follow up to my Zoom video that was about screen sharing and about creating breakout rooms and other kind of features when you're teaching. I'll link that one below. But in this video, it's more behind the scenes. So the setting is to consider, creating recurring appointments, looking at your recordings, at your attendance, and all of that. So I'm gonna share my screen so you can follow along with me when I go over these types of tips. All right, so let's start with the settings portion of Zoom. And this is the behind the scenes. I do this obviously before I create a meeting. And I'm not gonna go through all the settings here because there's tons of them, but the ones that I feel are really important, I'm gonna focus on. And so the first one here is the waiting room. I always have this turned on when I'm teaching or in my office hours so that I know exactly who's entering my classroom. So I see the student's name, okay, they're supposed to be there. I go ahead and admit them into the classroom. So I don't have to worry about Zoom bombing or anything like that because I'm the one actually manually getting them into the class. It obviously takes more of my time in the beginning of class or throughout if someone's kicked off and then they have to be added back in. But I like knowing when who is entering my classroom. So this is the one setting that I definitely do have turned on. Another one I have turned on is embedding the passcode in the invite link, right? So the link that you give them when you create these meetings, it's automatic that when they click it, they have the passcode, you know, and they can just be in the waiting room automatically. They don't have to manually put in a passcode to join the meeting. So I do have that turned on too, and it obviously makes life much easier. Now, in the schedule meeting section, the first two are, are about are the videos automatically on for the host or the participants? These are definitely both turned off, right? I manually say, okay, I'm ready to be on camera. Let's turn on my video when I'm on Zoom. Same for the participants. I definitely do not want to force my students to be on camera automatically. They choose to be on the camera by clicking video. So these two are definitely ones that I have turned off for privacy reasons. In a similar manner, I also mute all participants when they join a meeting. So rather than having to constantly ask, you know, you have your mic on, turn it off, remember, turn it off, remember, turn it off. When they come in, they're all on mute. And so they have to actually unmute themselves in order to speak. So that just makes it easier to ensure that we all start with the um, audio muted. And then we move on from there and unmute when they have something to say. So this is really important, especially if you have tons of students. If you have a huge classroom, definitely make sure that you mute them when they enter into the chat or they enter into the classroom. Now in the in-meeting section, most of this is turned on. So the chat, right, it's on. So you can prevent participants from saving the chat if you want to. Um, I don't really use the chat that often, so I don't have this on. Um, so but I do have the chat on. I don't have the preventing the saving on. Um, private chat, so I do let my students have one-to-one -one conversations if they need to, right? So they might have a question for a certain classmate, so I do allow them to speak to everyone or to speak to a specific, specific person. I also have the option of auto-saving chats on, right? So automatically saving all in-meeting chats so I can actually see, okay, well, let's look at the record of what students were discussing in the classroom. I also have the sound notifications on. So when someone joins, there's a little sound. Um, but more importantly, when someone leaves, there's a sound. So if it, I'm in with my class and I hear a little noise, I know someone's left my classroom early. Um, sometimes they come right, right back. It's, in a, you know, it's a Wi-Fi issue. But other times they just left halfway through and then assume they didn't notice or didn't care, right? Um, but I like knowing, okay, someone's left my classroom. Hopefully they'll come back quickly. If not, make a note of it so I know that they've missed potentially very important information that they need to know or, you know, just for my own records, who's actually attending class the whole time. I don't use a file transfer feature often but I do have it on just in case I need it. So if I need to send a file to the ones on Zoom, usually just have it on my LMS, but if it's something unexpected, I do have that on so it can be done easily if I need to in the moment. If you wanna use polls, make sure you have the meeting polls on, but just kind of going down through here. Screen sharing is huge in teaching, of course, so I make sure that it's on, that all participants can share, so my students can share their screens as well if they need to but then who can start sharing with someone else is sharing? Only the host, because I wanna make sure that you know students aren't accidentally you know, sharing on top of each other when they shouldn't be. So I have them all able to share, but only I can you know, interrupt, so to speak, a sharing moment. 
I don't use the annotation or whiteboard options, but I do have them on in case I want to for some you know, reason in a certain class period. The nonverbal feedback can be really great. I do have to turn that on so that they can you know, have quick responses where they basically click and it says, oh, go slower, right? Or yes or no, if you ask yes or no question. And so they, there's these like reaction icons that are available if you have this option on. So I do recommend it. If you're in the meeting, definitely breakout rooms are huge. Have that on. And I do have allow host to assign participants, right, when scheduling so that I can do that in advance or I can do that on Zoom in the moment, whichever one I prefer. And so again, I have that video that it shows you exactly how to create breakout rooms that I'll link below. I do have a virtual background option on. I actually can't use it on my computers because my computers are too old, um, but I do have it in case, you know, my students want to do that for privacy reasons. For email notifications, I do have these on as well for the most part. The first one is the most important in my opinion. I do want to know when a recording is available so that I can post it to the LMS as soon as possible. And so those are the main settings that I wanted to point out, the ones that I feel are important to have on or to have off. Now you likely know how to create a meeting, but in case you're not sure if you're creating them individually, don't, don't recommend that, right? Instead, what I do is I just have them as recurring. So you'd see here, there's the 7th of 32 will be happening on Tuesday when I teach this particular class, right? And so in this case, let's say we're going to go ahead and schedule a meeting. And you have the class, I use a class name and a time the class begins just to make it easy. Um, I don't really use a description. And then you have here, okay, when is the meeting, but then, and how long is it, right? The time, but then you click recurring, right? And so in that case, you have, all right, well, it recurs, you know, weekly, right? So, and it, it recurs on, let's say you're having a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, right? And it's the end date is, and you click the end date, right? And so in that case, once you create this meeting, then it creates every single class period, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the whole semester whatever start and end date you're giving this meeting, right? And so again, you can go through, is a passcode required? Is, a, is there a waiting room, right? Are the videos automatically on or off? So a lot of this you can do, the settings you can do on this actual page, right? Um, but I just like having it existed already, so it's easy to do every time I have a new meeting created, right? And so again, meeting options, I do have muting upon entry right? Um, there are other ones like automatically record meeting. I don't record all of my class sessions and I don't record immediately when class begins when I do record my sessions. I like choosing, okay, start recording now and recording now. So you can do this if you need to, but I actually, you know, don't because I prefer to having more control over when a recording starts and ends. All right, and then you save it and then you have now the meetings recurring. So what's great there is that when you go to meetings, it actually like moves, right? So once this class period is over, then this one moves up, right? And then so you know, oh, my next meeting is this one, right? And so just over and over again, I get these three moving throughout the page. And then I also have an office hour, a link that's individual, right? That's, that's separate from my regular class periods because all of my students use the same office hour link. Whereas my classes are different links to make sure, again, that there's no, you know, students that are not supposed to be there in the classroom. Now, I record to the cloud because I'm using my school computer, not my own. And so all of my recordings are under cloud recordings. It can really vary how long this takes. I've had some happen really fast more recently, and it's been excellent. But I remember my first time I recorded a class meeting, it took, like, I think, 44 hours for me to get the recording. It was crazy. It was literally a 40 minute video that took almost two full days to get um, onto my cloud. But then the rest of them, I actually got it like an hour later. So maybe it was just when things were much busier, but you know, nowadays it's pretty fast. So you just find the recording that you want. And then you have different files here. I always download the one that has the screen sharing with the speaker view because I tend to share my screen a lot. But if you want to just give them the audio recording, um, or a transcript, right? So that can be other options too, but I actually only use the shared screen version. So I've never actually opened either of these to see you know, how well they work, right? But in this case, I download it and then I upload it to the LMS. Sometimes I do some editing if I need to, but for the most part, I, I don't usually need to. Now, if you need to see attendance, right? You can go to reports and then usage. And from there, you just find what class period are you looking at, and then you can see you know, how many participants you have, and you can click it. And when you do, it actually shows you the names of the people 
who are in the Zoom meeting. So you can see that and you can see how long were they there or you know how, how many minutes, right? So that's a great way of checking. You know, when you hear the beep, you know somebody left early. So then you can check later on, okay, who is it that left early, right? Who actually didn't make it through the whole class? Did they come back or, or not? So that's under reports and then usage. Keep in mind, it only lasts for a month. So do make sure you're taking attendance on a weekly basis so that you don't like, you know, forget. And then two months later, you're looking back and it's not actually there anymore. So there is limitation here for those reports. Click like if you found the video helpful and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future teaching tips. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments below.